Hey guys, it's Libby and today I am here to talk about how to deal with a dysfunctional family during the holiday season. I got this requested quite a few times and with Thanksgiving coming up, Hanukkah, Christmas, New Year's, I know that we're all going to be spending more time with our families and you know, sometimes we're a little bit dysfunctional and sometimes we need a little help on how to deal with that. And you know, maybe it isn't a holiday. Maybe it's just a normal day in your family and you struggle with them. Well, I'm here to give you some of my advice on how to deal with it. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna say is that you choose your attitude. And I'm sure you've heard that a million times in your life, but it's true and it's important. If you go in there with the attitude of this is gonna be terrible, I'm already mad, I just don't wanna be here. Like if you go in like that, chances are it's not gonna go great. You're not gonna have a good time and you might ruin your holiday, you know? So you got you gotta go in with an attitude that says, this could be okay. It could go okay. You know, I'm not saying you gotta go in there like, wow, this is gonna be the best day of my life. This is gonna be great. I love my family to death. They're the best people in the world. I love this. This is gonna be wonderful. You don't have to go in like that, okay? I understand that that's a little unrealistic, but you do need to go in with some optimism, some hope in your heart that things could go okay. The next thing I wanna say is that you cannot expect change. You can't expect your family members to change for you. You can't expect your problems that you're having with them to change. You've gotta have realistic expectations that this holiday isn't about us and our problems. This holiday is about celebrating whatever it may be, okay? So you need to go in there not expecting to change them or to change the situation because chances are it's not going to happen on this day. That sounds like something that you're going to need like a serious sit down conversation to fix, not just over Christmas dinner or whatever. The next important thing to do is to have a plan. You need to have a base plan first up. So like if something happens, if X, Y, Z happens, you need to know, okay, how am I going to react to that? And I'm not saying you need to plan for every situation possible, but if you're like, yeah, my, my grandpa is probably going to bring up how much he loves Trump and how I'm stupid for not liking Trump or whatever. Like if you know that that's going to come up or you think it probably will, think about your plan and how you're going to react to that. Because if you go in there unprepared, you're probably gonna feel like you're being targeted, you're gonna feel like you're out of control, and neither of those things are good feelings. So just go in there prepared and ready for what might come at you. Have your rational responses ready for these conversations that you might have. The next thing I wanna say is that you need to plan to be calm. Do not go in there with the intention to fight these people. These are the holidays, they're supposed to be wonderful and I know that they might try to fight you, like your grandpa might start a fight with you about politics or something, but do not feed into it. You know, feeding into a fight is only gonna make the situation worse. It's not like the other person's just gonna back down or like you're gonna actually resolve the issue with your fight. So it's best to avoid fighting. And again, if someone tries to pick a fight with you, do not feed into it. Do everything you can to not feed into it. Change the subject, walk away, whatever you need to do to not feed into that fight. I will also say that you need to be ready to be the adult. You might be a 13 year old watching this video and your grandpa might be picking on you, but you need to be the adult in the situation. If they're not gonna be the adult, if they're gonna pick a fight with you, you need to be ready to be the adult and not fight back, okay? You need to be ready to be the mature one when your family members might not be. And it's not fair to you that that's the situation you're in. You should both be mature in that situation, but you've really just gotta be ready to be the adult, honestly. So when you're getting ready to go, another part of your planning should be setting boundaries. So examples of boundaries could be, I'm only gonna stay there for two hours and then I'm gone. A time limit is a really good boundary to set if you think that you get burned out on these people or if like more time leads to more problems or something like that. So setting a time boundary is good. Also, if there are certain family members you just can't talk to, it's okay if you set that boundary for yourself. Maybe you just can't talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. 
maybe you need to have somebody else with you when you talk to them if they talk to you or something like that so if you need to have an ally with you maybe plan to have an ally bring a friend or like have a family member who's on your side be with you especially when those tough conversations could arise Another good boundary to set is what kind of topics you will talk about. Say politics is something you do not want to talk about and somebody starts talking about politics, you say, hey, this is the holidays, it is not time to talk about politics, it's not time to talk about Trump, whatever, whatever. You know, it is okay to set boundaries. You are entitled to these boundaries that you set for yourself. Now, if you set really tight boundaries, you've got to expect that people might backlash against them a little bit because they're not used to maybe you taking that step to protect yourself. So there's a chance that when you set boundaries that they will not be respected or that they'll get some pushback on them, but that's kind of just the risk you have to take in order to protect yourself. The next thing I want to say is that it is okay to control what you can and that kind of goes hand in hand with boundaries. So setting boundaries is giving you some control of a situation that might otherwise feel chaotic or unsafe. So take control where you can. Um, don't try to control other people though, I will say. Like I said, you're not going to change them on this holiday. So do not try to control other people. All you can do is control yourself. I want to add that your reactions are the only thing that you have control over in a conversation. You control how you react. You cannot control what they say. They will say what they will say, but you cannot control it. You can only control the way you react and you can react in a fighty way or you can react in a peaceful way, okay? So choose your reactions carefully. Don't just let the emotions get the best of you and you react in anger or something. Really sit with the emotion, analyze it, digest it, and then produce your reaction. Um, another tip I want to give you is to take breaks. Say, you know, you're talking with your family and you're just feeling really overwhelmed. Maybe you're not even talking about something super like controversial or something, but you're still just starting to feel like a little stressed, a little weight on your chest. Go ahead and take a break, whether that means going to the bathroom and sitting in there for five minutes, whether that means stepping away to go play with the dog or something, you know, just take a break from the situation, okay? Because if you don't, you might explode. You might explode and that's not good and you will not feel good if you <laughs> explode. So take a break. As I get close to wrapping up this video, I just want to remind you guys that these people you're at odds with, these people you're struggling with, they are people. They have feelings, emotions, they have reactions to things, they have beliefs, they have core beliefs, they have experiences, you know, they are these complex human beings. And human beings are so complex. Being a human is Hard. There is so much that goes into it, you know, so I just want you to remember that they are going through life the best way they can. You know, maybe they do need to open their minds a little bit more. Maybe they do need to be a little more compassionate, things like that. But you got to remember that these people are people, you know what I mean? Like they are flawed just like you are. So you can't expect perfection out of them. And I'm not saying that your expectations of your family is necessarily too high. Like say you're gay and your mom hates gay people. You wanting her to not hate gay people, that expectation is not too high. That's not what I'm saying. But like I said, the holiday probably isn't the day to talk about it. You know, maybe it is the day for you. Maybe it's the day that you've got the courage to speak about this issue. Maybe. And if that's the case, you know what, go ahead and do it. But I just want to say you've got to be prepared for the consequences and be ready to defend yourself, but also be ready to not fight. It's okay to protect yourself, but you do not want to start a fight with these people. The fight will get you nowhere, okay? You don't want to get into some super heated debate, you know, because I guess I have a strong feeling that when people are in debates like that, like really heated back and forth, back and forth, you know what I mean? The problem is not going to get solved because each person in that moment when they're a little bit angry, when they're a little bit irate, you know, they're not thinking, hmm, I should really consider what this person is thinking, you know? 
So if your family is going to respond in that sort of way, it might not be the time to bring up these tough conversations. That all said, I still think that the holidays are a beautiful thing and most people don't want to ruin it by fighting, but you do deserve respect, okay? So I, it's like a fine line, I feel like, on like what is worth fighting over and what is not, and I use the term fighting loosely, but um, just remember that these people are people, they are imperfect, they are flawed, just like you, I mean, that's just what they are, that's what being a human is, and you can't really expect perfection. Another thing you can do at the holidays is when you're noticing these people with all these differing viewpoints and whatnot, observe them. You are now a psychologist and you are observing them and taking mental notes and maybe diagnosing them in your head. Now I'm not saying like actually go about diagnosing these people, I'm just saying if there's this craziness going on and you're observing it, you're observe it, take it in, be like, whoa, man, that's insane, but just in your head, okay? Do what you need to do to accept these humans as they are. I just want to add that it's not a bad thing to have fun with these people, to kind of go in and try to enjoy yourself. Because although they might be very different than you and have differing viewpoints or something like that, you know, you don't want to have a miserable night. So it's okay if you want to try to like talk to these people and joke around or tell them a funny story that happened to you or laugh at their funny story. Like, just because they're different than you doesn't mean that it's like not okay to enjoy the time you're spending with them. You want to give yourself that grace to, you know, go about your life and try to live your life and this day is part of your life and you want to try to live it as best you can. The last piece of advice I have for you is to debrief with somebody. You know, after this potentially stressful day, it would be a good idea to talk to somebody about it, whether that's a friend or a family member that you get along with or a therapist, whatever. Just try to like take it in and talk about it, you know? like. It could be a traumatic experience, honestly. Like, it could be a really bad experience and it's good to have somebody that you can talk to about it. But yeah, so that is my advice on how to survive a family function with a dysfunctional family. And there's a lot of like fine lines in there, but I think the moral of the story is that you need to give yourself grace and you need to give them grace and go about it in a graceful way, so. Yeah. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any more ideas for people to try out when they're in a situation like this, feel free to leave that down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I got for you. Have a good um, day, week, whatever. Have a good holiday. I hope it goes well for you. I really hope it goes well. Yeah, so have a, have a good one.